All right, fellow users, it has been brought to my attention that there is some confusion on behalf of the Blender side of the setup process or quite possibly confusion on the Unreal side. Now, the reason why I made the Chaos Vehicles Are Easy video is because it's simply that. On the Unreal 5 side of things, they've made it ridiculously easy for us to bring in vehicles. Literally, all you have to do is ensure very specific things come into play before you export your file. So I'm going to show you one key feature that translates over to these four vehicles that I have pulled up here. So the first thing you'll notice is that the wheels have their own origin. That's extremely important because Unreal will take over when you export this all out. Secondly, you'll also notice that the vehicle itself, or at least the chassis, is lined up directly on the x-axis or also the y-axis. We also know that there are no bones required for these setups, so that can be ruled out from the get-go. So as you can see here, this is it. Four wheels and a body. No more, no less. If we were to jump into this monster truck file that I have here, I had to get a little more unique with the setup because the wheels will always align on this axis and this axis. Um, now, I remember back in the day when you had everything, it was more like you wanted something more like, I think it was like this. And then you'd have to line up your origin of your root bone with the lower end of the vehicle, but you don't have to do that in these particular newer setups. So um, just keep in mind where the wheels are in relation to the center of the scene. Let's take a look at another one, this motorcycle. Same concept. The wheels are all lined up on this axis. Everything is centered. The whole point is there's nothing complex about this. It's literally as I've set it up in my tutorials, and there's not a whole lot that can be, you know, there's not too much to defer from what my tutorials already state. So if there's any issues that you are having, it's probably because you did not set your origin to the center axis as we see here. Or it's quite possible that your wheels don't have their own origins. As you can see, they're not centering over here to where zero, zero, zero is. They, they're on their own. Also, I mean, even if you were to select all this and leave this one last and file export, you know, you do the whole export as an FBX, you want to make sure that you have your selected objects, you have your mesh, no armature, right? And then, of course, you have your geometry set to face, apply modifiers if that matters to you, there's no animation, and I usually turn off add leaf bones, even though, as we said, no armature. So this can be exported as is just fine. And it's all properly scaled, which you should already be doing that prior to export, which is why our origins sit here and here, 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 and here, right? So, and it goes the same for everything else that I have, except for the Chaos Motorcycles. Those get a little weird. And that's why I had to make a custom tutorial for that because obviously if I had kept this all as one object, like all the other wheel or the other vehicles go, then we'd run into issues with the steering because normally the old way would have required bones and all this other stuff to make it work. And in this case, because um, you can't use a traditional vehicle setup, that's why we did incorporate bones for this particular part of the project because essentially it's kind of like, it's more of a, you know, a, a trick, you know, you're, it's, it's kind of like an, you know, an, a workaround. Yeah, I think that's a better word. It's a workaround because you can't use the traditional setup for just a, a vehicle, you know, like a car or a truck or something like that. So just keep that in mind that more than likely, unless the Unreal devs make a change in relation to how motorcycles works, this is probably going to be the only way to work around having running into errors, especially when it comes to the steering section of the motorcycle and the wheel, which is supposed to follow certain aspects as well. And it just doesn't work very well. So just keep that in mind. 
But either way, now that we've covered the Blender side of things in basically stating that this is how it has to be in order for the vehicle setup to work properly in Unreal. So if you don't have your origin for the main body of the vehicle set here and your wheels all set along this axis, you're more than likely going to run into problems. Now, I've never tried um, exporting it up here or down here. I've always tried to stick close to the center. And that has a lot to do with how, like when you bring in the file to Unreal and you're just looking at it on a general basis, sometimes it might pass through the floor or whatever. I'm not really sure if it works all the time, but I've just seen that error come up and I've tried to avoid that. So that's why I have it set up like this. So um, I'm not saying that it's the perfect way, but I am saying that my way works extremely well. So let's jump over to the Unreal side of things and see what issues may come up that could cause some problems. All right, so let's take a look at the physics asset on the Unreal side and see what we have going on here. So take a look at the first wheel, front left. Um, let's scroll down here. Now it says it's set to capsule as the primitive type, but I think that it's Take a look at perspective and see what we have. So instead of, uh, it just says capsule by default, but it's actually a sphere. So I think if I were to reset this, which I'm not going to because it's perfectly fine. Um, so be sure to make sure that you set your primitive type to the actual shape that you want it to be. Um, I've tried convex on some things that doesn't really work very well. So I would not recommend that unless you know what you're doing in terms of like better more complex setups, but as you can see, all the wheels are set up with primitive shapes as spheres. Um, if we look at the collision for the truck body, we can see that it is obviously a rectangle. And if we go into front perspective, actually, I want to do right perspective so you can see. Um, if this were the center axis for the scene, as you can see, everything's lining up here. And that is where the base of the truck for your collision box should be set. Just either just below there, or I don't know, if you want to be perfectly lined up, you could do that as well. Um, but as you can see, it works just fine either way. Um, now, one thing I did notice, and I did point that in the update video for the monster trucks, is ensuring that the collision height for this can cause some issues. So perhaps if you are also having problems, you might want to look into where this is positioned. That might run into uh, certain errors that you weren't looking for. So, or this is the basis for the standard setup that you should be concerned about. Keep in mind that the setup is not complex at all. And that's the reason why the Unreal devs made the setup process easy because Unreal takes over. So literally, so long as you export everything out and it's named properly, then you shouldn't really run into any issues. So just by looking at the physics asset, everything seems to be in order. If I were to pull up, let's see here, let's find that truck file again, truck one. All right, so let's take a look at the wheel files in the blueprint class, just to see if there's anything significantly different. Um, now you'll notice that my offset is set for minus 10. This is some a variable you may want to play around with because it can cause issues in relation to where the wheels show up in your physics asset or in terms of, uh, if you were to do a show physics, then it would reveal the height. So if you're running into issues, maybe check this, um, you also want to experiment with your wheel radius. That can also cause problems. Wheel width, I don't really mess around too much with, but it's possible that it could, could you know, have issues. Um, let's see here. Affected by brake. Um, not too much here. Affected by steering, obviously, because it is the front wheels that we're having set up. Um, is there anything else in here that would be... I keep my suspension max raise and drop about the same because I've noticed that this is a variable you want to play around with, but you don't want to go overboard because it'll make the wheels either 
you know, or your suspension will either sink down too far. And so at least keeping this in the, in the middle to start off with will at least give you some room to work with because then you could do like a max drop of like, I don't know, 1.1 or 1.2, but I wouldn't go too far. Let's see what the default is just by switching that up. So it's 10, right? That's way too much. So that's why we keep it at one. And we just play around with the settings till we find something that we want. And, and let's see here. Is there anything else in here we want to see? Nope, I don't have any other weird revert arrows on anything else. So let's go ahead and pull up the rear wheel and see if there's anything different about that. Now, this is interesting because my offset in this end is different. So we have a minus 10 on the Z axis for the front wheels and then zero for the rear. And I'm not really sure why. Um, that's really strange, huh? I wonder, I must have missed that one and there were no changes here. So that's very strange. So I guess what we could do is take a look at the file and see if there's any major changes. But honestly, I think leaving this at zero really isn't gonna have any effect on it. And I'm not entirely sure why um, it's not set for minus 10, but uh, we'll open up the file and take a look. Um, as you can see, affected by handbrake, affected by brake, and affected by engine because I wanted a rear wheel drive truck. So that's why we have that there. Um, anything major? So fiction force multiplier, that's pretty much a variable that's up to you. Um, the wheel radius, I'm not sure why that's drastically different in relation to the front, but either way, I more than likely just went with what worked. So there's a lot of jumping into the game engine and then checking the physics and then backing out and making changes. It's just something that's very normal that we have to deal with, obviously affect by steering, like I said before. And I kept the same thing with the suspension max raise and drop to one and one. So that's extremely important to keep an eye on this because you will run into issues that appear to be overly wrong in terms of like it might cause your vehicle to jump around and stuff and that's that's probably why and i guess i have a vehicle testing file all right so i have my vehicle testing file open and before we get into taking a look at the Unreal Engine side, I want to also jump back into the Truck 1 file that I have here. We looked at the physics asset. We looked at the front and rear wheels and noticed obviously that there are some key differences between the two. So I'm going to change that to Chevy 1963 BP, firstly, because I have the uh, monster truck pulled up from uh, that video I made a while back. Um, and we're going to just take a peek at the blueprint itself just to see if there's anything significantly different. Now, one thing I do want to say is don't ever be too good to have and or find ways to debug your blueprints, meaning show collision is extremely important. Wireframe mode is extremely important. Why? Because it allows you to see certain aspects going on outside of just the standard view, i.e. this. So you can't always just get wowed with, you know, your awesome car that you're trying to throw in or your truck or motorcycle or whatever it is without also trying to ensure like, okay, yeah, so what if it looks awesome if it doesn't work, right? So then that's why we're here, right? Great. So Let's go ahead and click play. Truck jumps in, fantastic. So if it doesn't do this by default, yeah, you got some big problems. So let's uh, push the P button and see what's going on here. As you can see, because you can't see my mouse cursor, that those same physics spheres for the wheels line up very well as they should for all the wheels. Steering works just fine. You see that the collision box for the body isn't going anywhere. If I hit the brakes, truck stops, right? 
if I hit P again to get out of this view mode, we can still see everything that's going on. We still see those fears. We still see the collision box. Everything is working just fine. And I wish I had some ramps in here to jump off to kind of, you know, add some further proof of concept to that. But as you can see, I mean, there's nothing going on here that's of issue. So more than likely, whatever's going on with your vehicle has a lot to do with the first things that we went over. And I actually skipped a step because I was supposed to show you the blueprint first. But uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, here we are. Anyway, so actually I kind of did. I kind of did because there's not much here, right? I mean, if you look around, it's all just basic movement control. I mean, look how, I mean, like this is probably the smallest blueprint I'll, you will ever have. This is one, definitely the smallest I've ever had. Um, so let's see if there's anything that we can look at that may be causing other further issues. So ensure that your wheel setup information is correct. Uh, you can choose to enable or disable suspension. Obviously, I have it enabled, though I've never tried taking that off, but that may have saved me some trouble with uh, those wheel offsets in, in, the, in the suspension realm. Um, but either way, I mean, just make sure your names are absolutely correct for the bone names, even though they're not actually bones, but Unreal creates a skeleton for you upon import. So, you know, it in a way, it gives an armature to you on the back end. Um, so you have to make sure these are correct. As you can see, there's no additional offset set for the front wheels, and it's set for the Chevy front wheel class and we can look at all of these Chevy front front right zero 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 on the additional offset if we go to the rear wheels rear left C underscore rear no additional offsets no additional offsets everything's properly named so without that then you're gonna run into issues with not seeing the wheels do anything um, I don't mess with any of this at all like, I actually didn't even know this was here until just now. Uh, mechanical setup. I mean, I don't think you're going to have any issues in, in terms of the uh, engine. I mean, because that's pretty much up to however it is you want your vehicle to behave in terms of getting it moving around. Um, though, maybe the differential setup may determine how and where the wheels are spinning and whatnot. Maybe even the front rear split. Um possibly might have an effect on how the wheels spin but either way i mean like regardless of how whether or not you have your engine set up or anything like that when you hit play the main thing is once you've had the physics asset and everything set up prior to the engine stuff it should still drop in and just exist so um we can move down let's we'll see what else could we look at uh, we have the steering setup which i barely mess with um Reverse this brake, sure. Mass, sure. Um, I did mess around with the center of mass override for a while, but I think that a proper setup would mean that you don't need to do this. So I um, also did not change the chassis width or height. Um, that is all stuff that I think is subjective to you, the person who is setting all this up. Um, I left it to default because I was just trying to get everything up and running. And obviously, I did not run into any errors, regardless of whether this vehicle is different from the original Unreal vehicle setup. So, and that's kind of the, the whole point I'm trying to make is that, you know, all of this is set up just, you know, pretty regular, other than maybe a few changes here and there in terms of like, you know, the mass and whatnot, you know. But it should all fairly match the original Unreal Chaos vehicle setup um let's see is there anything else i could find in here and i really don't think there is mm. nope none of that none of that maybe nav movement no anything here nope nope not seeing anything nothing here because there would be that revert if there was and there's not so, oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could click that and make him minimize that way. That's interesting. So, I mean, there's not much for me to show in regards because uh, this is kind of the primary portion of this file. Everything else is just, you know, the mesh, which um, 
You do want to be sure that you have your animation blueprint set up. We can take a look at that if you like. But I mean, there could be missteps pretty much in multiple areas. But I was very concise about how this tutorial was set up for this particular reason. Because if you do everything in that order, you really shouldn't run into many issues because you're working on all of what needs to be focused on in that file in that moment. So, you know. I can understand why there's still maybe a bit of confusion, but, you know, chaos vehicles are easy. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, we have our skeletal mesh here. Um, no other particular changes other than ensuring that it is using the animation blueprint and the animation blueprint class is set for what it's supposed to be, which I'm sure hopefully that's what you have. Um, let's take a look at physics. Simulate physics, most definitely, because it is a skeletal mesh. And that's the only thing I have ticked here. Let's take a look at collision. Not too much to look at there. Advanced. Nope. And I'm only focusing on the ones that actually matter, because all this other stuff, I, I, mean, I mean, it's not really relevant. Let's take a look at skeletal mesh. Anything here? Nope. So is there anything else that could be affecting? Nope, everything looks good here. So I guess the only thing left is to take a peek at the animation blueprint. Because that's all we have left. I mean, the skeleton, I mean, but that's only going to tell you basic information about the skeleton that Unreal created itself. I did not bring this in. This was auto-generated. So let's look at that. And as I suspected, because chaos vehicles are easy, all that Unreal wants out of the animation blueprint is to know how to treat the wheels that's it so and that's just in terms of uh just setting up a basic car or truck um obviously when we jumped into the motorcycle side of things this got way more complex because we featured this information and we also had to tell unreal hey um we want the bones for the steering setup to be the one that controls the direction of the way that the wheel turns so that's the reason why we had a default wheel for unreal to allow you to just get moving around and then a fake wheel that spun at the same speed as the front wheel but also was affected by the angle of steering of the handlebars so of course you know this basic setup is going to be you know as is four nodes so, like I've said, more than likely, if you're running into issues, it's probably because you have a missed up in either the animation blueprint, which I highly doubt, the physics asset, which is very plausible, the main blueprint, which, as you can see, you know, if you don't name any of your stuff properly, then you might run into errors, or possibly your wheels quite possibly so i'd look into that but like i said i'm not really sure why my uh rear wheel i think if you oh that's another thing that i, I will point out too is that if i were to go into the physics asset right and select this wheel it should tell me somewhere what its radius is it's been so long since I looked at this file. I really don't remember. Oh, there it is. See? Yep. So that's why I have the radius set for, I guess, I still have it set for 32 on uh, the front. And the rears are set for 39. So maybe that was a mistake on my part. But either way, as you can see. All right. So just for fun, we're going to troubleshoot the rear setup that I have for this and see quite possibly 
that that's what's causing my minus 10 offset here. So, and more than likely that has to do with the wheel radius. So let's jump into the truck physics asset. I already have the front wheel selected here and we're gonna go down to where we found the other radius information. Um, I just wanna check and see if these both match up and they do. So because of that, I'm just going to control C to copy this and uh, we will move over to the wheel radius in this file on the C front. I'm going to control V to paste that, compile and save. Now more than likely, because I have a minus 10 offset, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure that may fix the issues. We shall see. So let's just set it to zero. Compile, save. I'll, uh, I don't think it's gonna let me open it from this. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Drops down, everything's fine. Looks good to me. So that was a debug on my part. So that just goes to show that the wheel radius, or at least trying to discover exactly what that is, depending on how big your wheel is, is extremely important in knowing that everything is in working order. Why is it red now? It was green in the other one, but that's weird. But anyway, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, your wheel radius will affect whether or not you need an offset. And I'm guessing that the most ideal setup is zero, zero, zero offset. That means your wheel's radius is good, which means you need to make no other changes to raise and lower its current location. And mind you, I guess a huge difference between uh, 32 wheel radius and 39 wheel radius is minus 10 offset. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And I actually had to go back in and and add this to the video because it only makes sense to ensure that basically everything's not necessarily 100% zero, uh, bah, not necessarily that everything's 100% zeroed out, but just for the fact that it all matches up numerically um, in different areas. So we had to make sure that the wheel radius mat in the physics asset matched up with the wheel radius on the actual wheel class blueprint. And because of that, that has an effect on its offset within these blueprints. So all the more reason why it's extremely important to debug your own projects. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.